My name is Dan Fernari. I'm at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in the Geology and Geophysics Department. I'm a senior scientist there and I've been here at Woods Hole for about the last 23 years. Uh, my uh, uh, passion in life is to study deep sea volcanism. Uh, volcanoes on the deep ocean floor are uh, features which uh, are very important because they are one of the things that uh, actually uh, is uh, very critical to the evolution of the earth. There is a mid-ocean ridge system uh, that snakes its way through the bottom of the ocean that is uh, uh, over 60,000 miles long and uh, it is a feature which is the largest volcanic feature on the planet. Uh, it's much more active than any volcanoes on land, but because it is underwater anywhere from 1,500 meters to almost 4,000 meters deep, um, people never see it. And so people really don't know that there's volcanism in the deep ocean. Uh, the, uh, the, the types of volcanoes that you have on the mid-ocean ridge are uh, similar to the kinds of volcanoes you have in Hawaii or in Iceland. They're made up of basaltic lava. Uh, and it is a type of volcanism which generally is not very explosive, uh, not like the kind of volcanoes that you have uh, in Indonesia or in, um, uh, that are above uh, oceanic trenches where the ocean crust is going underneath the continents. Uh, but these are the types of volcanoes that will pour out lava uh, more or less quiescently, meaning without a lot of activity, uh, and they can flow great distances. So my focus has been to study mid-ocean ridges uh, and to understand their uh, submarine volcanic processes, how they relate to the volcanism that we know and understand that happens above, uh, um, above sea level, uh, and also the, uh, the very uh, great diversity of uh, life that happens at mid-ocean ridges because of the heat and chemical exchanges that are taking place between the ocean, the volume of the ocean, and the water that gets heated up because of this uh, uh, hydrothermal activity, meaning the heating up of water uh, by the magma that is below the mid-ocean ridges. So the, the mid-ocean ridges are a type of feature that have uh, really only been discovered in the last 60 years. Um, people had some vague ideas about uh, what this uh, big ridge was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, for instance, back in the early 1900s, but it wasn't until you had modern echo sounding, meaning uh, the way that you determine the depth of the ocean, um, uh, that uh, people understood that it was in fact a continuous ridge and uh, people like Bruce Hazen and Marie Tharp at the Lamont Geological Observatory, part of Columbia University, or Bill Menard out at Scripps Institution in California, uh, they studied mid-ocean ridges and uh, were the first to really recognize their importance and especially their importance in terms of plate tectonics. Plate tectonics is, uh, is, is a uh, process which is fundamental to our planet and actually other planets too in the solar system. Um, but it's been very important in our planet because it is actually controlled uh, where uh, the continents have been moving around over hundreds of millions of years and the kinds of features that are developed. And in fact, it has a big uh, impact on where you might find mineral deposits. Uh, and uh, ultimately where you end up uh, having different kinds of biology on land. Because if you can imagine that North America uh, and uh, Europe and Africa and South America were all connected once in one big continent, you can understand how in some of the fossil records uh, those animals may have uh, actually been dispersed throughout those areas, but maybe the same animals. So we, we have lots of uh, different lines of evidence that were coming together in the early 1900s and into the middle of the 1900s. And uh, then it was also matched by the kinds of studies that were done to understand mid-ocean ridges by mapping them and by understanding what the types of structures were uh, along the mid-ocean ridge. Uh, one of the ways that we uh, study mid-ocean ridges is not only through understanding their topography or bathymetry in the case of th things underneath the water, um, but it's also by looking at the detailed structure of the features that are there. In a similar way that you could fly in an airplane over the Grand Canyon or over some very prominent topographic feature on land, uh, we tow sonars and we make bathymetric images of features that are underneath the water. And in doing so, we can tell a lot about how they have evolved over time, meaning 
uh, hundreds of thousands or millions of years. And that's very important because it allows us to understand the evolution of the, um, uh, of the spreading process that takes place throughout the world's oceans. Uh, Mid-ocean ridges are the place where the spreading is actually occurring, so the, 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 the crust of the Earth at the Mid-ocean Ridge is zero age, meaning it's very, very young, uh, versus an area, for instance, off Japan, or uh, an area near the, the continental, western continental margin of the US may be tens of millions or hundreds of millions of years old because that's a place where the oceanic plate is going underneath the continental plates. So we have used uh, a, a lot of acoustics in our ability to map the, uh, the oceans. That gives us um, a, a way to, if you will, pull the plug on the oceans and drain the water out so that we can see the topography that is underneath it. And by studying that topography, and uh, we are able to then understand the evolution of that terrain, but also in sampling that terrain by dredging or by going down with submarines, either human-occupied submarines or remotely operated vehicles, we can sample and map the, uh, the ocean floor uh, in a way that really hadn't been able to be done 50 years ago or 60 years ago. So this is a very young science. It's a very young perspective that we have on this very fundamental part of the planet. I mean, when you think about it, um, you know, seafloor spreading really, even as a wild idea in some naturalist's mind, there were naturalists in, the, uh, in Germany and in, in, uh, in Italy and in other places that had this idea or this notion that maybe the continents were actually joined across the Atlantic, but it wasn't until the 1950s and 1960s that you had uh, scientists who were then studying oceanography, because uh, oceanography is a very young science, that were actually studying the, uh, the terrain underneath the ocean. And they were studying uh, many aspects of the ocean crust and the oceans and the, um, uh, the chemistry of the oceans uh, to understand what its role was in the evolution of our planet. So um, one of the, I think, important things uh, is uh, to understand that while it's easy to ignore uh, what goes on underneath the oceans, it actually has a very big impact. Uh, many people nowadays especially are aware of how important the oceans are for climate, um, and climate studies uh, have really demonstrated that we have had a significant impact over the last several hundred years on not only the chemistry of the oceans, they become more acidic, uh, as well as the temperature of the oceans. Um, and so the, the oceans really have a very important role to play um, I'm a marine geologist, so I mostly study the container of the oceans, meaning the ocean basin. Um, but uh, oceanography in general is something that's very critically important to 21st century society. And, uh, and the more we know about the ocean uh, and the ocean floor and, and, uh, and, and, and ocean processes, uh, the better off we'll be. Uh, we've also clearly ha had, a, had a, a, wake -up, a big wake-up call over the last few decades on how important um, uh, our exploitation of fisheries resources uh, has been um, and uh, the extent of marine pollution. All of these studies are involved in oceanographic science. Uh, whether you are a chemist or a biologist or a physical oceanographer that studies the physics of how water moves around, or whether you're a marine geologist or geophysicist like me, um, uh, these are the kinds of topics that are critically important to understand, and uh, it's one of the reasons why we are always looking for great students to enter into the field of oceanography, uh, because it is a very young field and there's still many things to, left to be discovered. One of the very important things uh, that has uh, evolved over the last, uh, I would say, decade to 15 years is the use of robotics in studying the oceans. Um, and that's been a very exciting field because Right now, we have the ability to map the bottom of the ocean with as great a detail as people on land have to be able to map either a shoreline or a specific feature. On, uh, on land, uh, they use various combinations of uh, laser line scanning or LIDAR imagery uh, to map at centimeter level uh, the kinds of uh, features that occur on land. Uh, underneath the oceans, we can use autonomous underwater vehicles, robots, that have very high, high frequency sonars that 
operate very close to the bottom so that you can actually make the same kind of digital elevation model of the bottom of the ocean that you can on land. And so as a result of that, our understanding of features has gone from being able to understand things that are maybe a kilometer on a side uh, using satellite altimetry data to uh, uh, about maybe a football field or so on a side using multi-beam bathymetric data. And now using autonomous underwater vehicles, AUVs, we can now map things that are a few centimeters, certainly sub-meter. And coupled to the ability to actually take high definition cameras and imagery down to the bottom of the ocean, we now have the ability to map and understand features on a scale that's relevant to whether something is causing something else. Meaning if you're imaging a hydrothermal vent and you're looking at some animals within the flow of that hydrothermal vent, um, you can actually image it at high resolution. You can map the hydrothermal vent using the autonomous underwater vehicle to understand whether those processes are related. The behavior of the animals versus the behavior of the vent. So it's something that has really revolutionized, I think, ocean sciences. And it's also allowed us to do a whole other range of type of studies, which is time series studies. You can actually have a robot that's able to measure things on the bottom of the ocean over longer periods of time than you can either stay there with a submarine or with a remotely operated vehicle. And the next level of that, which is equally exciting, is the development of um, uh, 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 ocean bottom observatories. These kinds of observatories are actually uh, in operation right now. Uh, the Ocean Observing Initiative by the National Science Foundation is a program that has taken, I would say, almost 10 years to develop, uh, and it's now actually functioning off the coast of Oregon and Washington. There is an observatory in several areas there. Ocean Networks Canada has an observatory off the west coast of, uh, of, of Canada. Uh, the French are operating an observatory in the middle of the Atlantic at a, at a seamount uh, south of the Azores Islands. So this is the kind of thing where scientists are realizing that in order to better understand processes and phenomena, they have to actually look at them 24-7. They have to have the ability to monitor and measure them. And so we're doing that. Um, and equally important is our ability to uh, monitor uh, seismic hazards offshore. As you know, seismic hazards offshore can create tsunamis, these uh, very large uh, ocean waves that are, can be very destructive. Um, and having the ability to have uh, uh, seafloor observatories and networks of ocean bottom seismometers is very important to that as well. So uh, for, for, for me, one of the things that over my almost 45 year career as a scientist and as an oceanographer and marine geologist, um, has been to put together some of this information that we've gleaned from these studies over the past several decades, and especially the sort of high resolution imagery that we've been able to acquire at various mid-ocean ridges of the volcanic terrain and the hydrothermal terrain. And um, in collaboration with several other colleagues uh, that I've worked with over the last few decades, uh, we have spent probably the last 10 years uh, writing a book uh, called uh, Discovering the Deep. So th this is a book which is uh, focused on the mid-ocean ridges um, as a way to understand the, uh, uh, the ocean crust and the processes that are occurring uh, within the oceans. Um, Discovering the Deep really looks at a whole range of processes associated with the geology and hydrothermal processes and the biology of the mid-ocean ridge system. Uh, which is extremely dynamic and is as active as any type of terrain and feature that you'd find on land um, and has uh, 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 sort of within it uh, the, the whole spectrum of geology and geochemistry and biology and tectonics um, and uh, seismicity and geophysics that is uh, part of the field of oceanography. So it is uh, uh, something which uh, we hope will capture people's imagination and especially young kids. It's got lots of great uh, pictures of the types of volcanic terrain, which is pretty fantastic, and the types of fantastic animals that you see at hydrothermal vents. Um, and uh, we've tried to uh, basically reveal that in this book with these high resolution images and the text, which is written for a, a, a pretty broad audience too. So it's something which we hope will engage uh, future scientists and will uh, further to further uh, um, help people understand this fantastic terrain that is underneath the oceans uh, at mid-ocean ridges. 
All of this, of course, rely, relies on funding. And most of the funding in countries uh, outside the U.S., and especially the U.S., is funded by public uh, m money. And, and those public dollars coming from uh, my and your tax dollars uh, are critically important to scientific research. Um, I think we've seen in the past that uh, there has been somewhat of a reluctance to understand how science really works, and that's one of the things that I feel is very important in my role as a scientist is to both uh, engage and entrain young researchers and young minds, engage kids to want to become a scientist, um, but they need to know that they have a future. And I think the more our congresspeople and law lawmakers and leaders know that science is crucial for society and is very important to the progress of society and also for the proper stewardship of our planet, um, I think uh, the, the better off we'll be. And so science funding is something which is very critical. It is a, in my view, an extremely good use of tax dollars. Uh, and it's something which has to be recognized as a real priority. And I always, you know, whenever I'm giving sort of public lectures, I always uh, mention the fact that you know, in the 1950s, after World War II, there was a real important recognition of the role that science played in the war effort. Um, and that's something which has, I think, been lost over the years. Um, it's something which recognizes the ability for scientists to make a substantial contribution to society in many ways that we can't really imagine. And, and uh, you know, if you just sort of look down at your hands and you look at your wristwatch, which is probably a small little microchip in a computer, or if you look at your, your phone and your, your, uh, your ability to make cellular communications and to you know, have a small computer which is more powerful than what, what, what went up in the first space launch, um, you know, that's something which has been, uh, is a demonstrable sort of uh, piece of evidence for the progress of science and how important and fundamental it's been to the progress of society. And so I think it's really important for us to recognize how important science is to society. And in terms of the oceans, even though they're covered by water, they're critically important to study. And it's something that really we should have as a priority for the 21st century is the study of the oceans and the study of the ocean floor.